Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're actually going to have a look at something a little bit different similar to what we did on Wednesday where we had a look at the coming weekly anomalies. Today we're actually going to have a look at the stratosphere, something we haven't actually had a look at in the past few weeks. Now we did concentrate on it of course in our winter look heads because it does play a big part in the overall theme of of winter it is quite a big weather pattern driver and of course in the early part of january we did see a technical sudden stratospheric warming but it didn't quite happen as smoothly as we initially anticipated it happened over quite a prolonged period of time as the polar vortex did hold off that warming but we did technically reach a negative uh, zonal mean wind high up in the stratosphere so technically we did see a major sudden stratosphere warming and there is the risk we could actually see another one now i'm going to be honest with you i don't quite know the implications of two sudden stratospheric warmings in the same winter but uh, one thing i do know is if we did see another sudden another sudden stratospheric warming it definitely would suggest that we could see prolonged cold and blocked patterns as we progress into the spring and it will get to the point where if you look forward to snow things like that it's unlikely to bring those sort of conditions because we'll be in the spring so the air a cold air isn't quite there instead it could just keep it cold and drab with lots of blocking trapped areas of low pressure and things like that so there are some winter lovers out there who would love a sudden stress very warming in december or january so it definitely could give quite a high chance of something colder through January and February but when you get into February or latter part of February then it does get to the point where potentially it's not the best idea if you do want a quick transition to something warmer and drier as we head towards the summer. Now we'll look at the latest GFS and ECM WF data just to give you an idea on what we're likely to be seeing over the coming weeks with the stratosphere. Now, of course, in the past few videos, we have been talking about quite a cold February coming up, and that could be down to the sudden stress very warming we saw through early part of January, or for, for starting in the early part of January, concluding more towards the middle part of January. So that is interesting indeed, and if we could see another warming occur, it could prolong the blocked patterns and potentially cold patterns all the way through March and April, potentially. On the latest GFS, you can see... We've got a lobe of stratospheric polar vortex. It doesn't look particularly big. It doesn't look particularly cold. It has been weakened substantially this winter. But actually, the zonal mean winds are average to above average, uh, above average at the moment. So even though the polar vortex isn't huge, it is weakening, which is inevitable as we do progress towards spring. It is actually relatively strong vortex at the moment. However, as we progress over the coming days and the coming weeks, the polar vortex does start to get attacked once again from a warming from siberia look at that big warming is starting to occur around the middle of the month penetrating into the arctic and again displacing the polar vortex and there is the risk again of seeing potentially a split which could even prolong those colder patterns further meaning more blocking patterns developing if we do have a look at the 10 HPA winds, you can see the zone of mean winds here would be close to reversal. Uh, and again, another potential SSW occurring here. If we do go back to some of the previous runs we've seen, we see a run from the 6 o'clock run, very similar. The midnight run, very similar. And the 6 p.m. run, again, very similar. So it's not just one anomalous run we are seeing quite a lot of consistency here which does give suggestion that it, it is a firm idea within the model output at the moment and if you have a look at so this gfs run or the midday gfs run it's slightly different view this is the cross section through the atmosphere so we're taking a slice at 60 degrees north straight over the north pole and we've got on the y-axis all the different pressure levels and on, on the x-axis we've got the time starting early february going all the way towards the middle of february here of course the stratosphere is around that 10 hpa level up towards 1 hpa and down towards 30 hpa kind of in that area there that's what we would class as the stratosphere again technical uh definitions may alter from that but that's the sort of area we're looking for a sudden stratospheric warming when it propagates further down to 100 hpa 300 hpa 500 hpa 
that's when it starts to affect our blocking patterns at the surface, potentially, and pressure patterns in general. And you can see at the moment, we do have a relatively strong polar vortex. On the left, it's the actual wind speed. So you can see here, it's 45 meters per second, high up in the stratosphere. And you can see how it seeps through the different levels. Of course, not producing the same wind speeds at the surface, but having an influence as it does seep through. On the right is the anomalies. Again, you see reds indicating, or slight reds indicating, slightly above average solar mean winds. But look what happens as we progress towards the middle part of the month. A huge signal, negative signal here from this GFS run. So a sudden stratospheric warming from this with a full reversal. And you can see the anomalies are down towards the minus 45 meters per second range. Now, what I do want to stress a sudden stratospheric warming in February, mid-February, is much more likely than a sudden stratospheric warming in early January or late December because the stratosphere and the polar vortex is weakening as we do progress towards spring. Uh, the polar vortex, because it is high up in the stratosphere, it follows the solar patterns in terms of winter, i.e. it is at its strongest and its coldest in and around the middle part to latter part of December when we have the lowest uh, amount of solar energy coming in. Uh, so of course at the moment it is naturally weakening but this could just give it that big push to get over the edge. We normally do see a sudden stratospheric warming, sometimes major, where it does go fully to reversal uh, very quickly, but normally it's sort of a few warmings in around the middle to end of March point, which does uh, equal the end of the polar vortex for the winter until it reforms in late August into September. So it will weaken and it will disintegrate, but this would push it through four, five, maybe even six weeks earlier than normal. If you have a look at the line chart for this, it's got the GFS ensembles here in green. Uh, and you can see at the moment, we are average to above average, and we are going to substantially weaken over the coming days. And you can see some ensemble members have us going below zero, so major sudden, sudden stratospheric warming territory. The darker blue line here, this is indicating where we've been so far this year. And you can see that, in fact, we've been around average or below average you can see through january how we had that big warming at the start of the month a little rebound and then another big warming then this is the as i said very sort of staggered slow drawn a sudden stress for it warming where it took about 10 days to two weeks to fully get that reversal and again difficult to say exactly what the impacts of that instead of a more traditional sudden stress for it warming where it happens over a few days this happened over sort of a week to two weeks difficult to say exactly said what that will two but you can see one warming potentially even another warming here you can see traditionally it is sort of end of march through towards early april that's when we see the change where it goes almost to zero and then into reversal actually as we head through the second half of april so traditionally that's when we would see that final warming but here we could actually see it all the way back into the middle to latter part of february very interesting indeed seeing this and as i say, stated i don't exactly know what the impacts would be of this pattern all i can say is that traditionally a sudden stress threat warming in the middle of february could prolong colder patterns or prolong cooler patterns let's just say because it becomes more difficult to be properly cold throughout march and april now after you finish by having a look at the ecmwf these are the weekly anomalies but for the stratosphere so the same charts we looked at on wednesday just categorized for 10 hpa temperatures here so you can see that warming already forming, in fact, um, over the next, uh, uh, starting next week. Uh, and then you can see it starts to probably take over the subsequent week and dominate all the way until early March. And you can see that is slightly uh, a warmer than average all the way into the middle of March. So perhaps doesn't suggest that this is the absolute final warming. Perhaps suggest that it will rebound the polar vortex. But potentially say, say, stating that it is going to stay weaker than average for the rest of the winter. Very interesting to see, of course, uh, and we'll just have to yeah, keep you updated on what's happening with this over the coming days. Again, it's not probably going to have a direct impact on the winter or the rest of winter, i.e. the rest of February, but it could have quite a big impact for spring. And if you do want a quick warm up through March and April, if you want to see 20 degrees maybe even mid-20s come the middle to end of April, which is, you know, can happen. We can see our first sort of mini heat wave, if you want to call it, in the middle or in around that middle of April point. If you did want that to occur, then you would not want a sudden stratospheric warming, because that can prolong 
big cold blasts as we progress into the spring and we've seen that of course saw the beast of knees in 2018 we saw cold weather prolong all the way through much of march of course that sudden stratosphere warming had it happened at the beginning of february so this a little bit later on i said could prolong it further so we will just have to see how it does play out over the coming weeks but never nonetheless uh, another very inter interesting uh, occurrence this winter potentially two big warnings of the stratosphere i haven't seen too many people talking about the unusual unusual late uh unusual nature of this but it's something i've not seen looking at the stratosphere for the past five years or so i've not seen two major warmings at all uh probably has happened of course and there will probably be some data out there on it but nothing i'm too accustomed with so be interested to see what happens uh and if it sort of goes by the book, then we could see quite a lot more colder or at least below average weather as we progress through the coming weeks. Again, it's difficult to say if it will be below average months or whether it will just be colder snaps. We'll have, we'll have to wait and see, of course. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you stay tuned for the videos coming out over the next few days. Of course, we're looking at the risk of something a bit colder and snowier as we progress through uh, through February. Uh, of course, that it could be as a result of the earlier sun stress very warming. And we'll see, of course, with that over the coming days. So then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.